Life is short, but in all reality, it is the longest thing we do. From the time of his conception to the moment we die, our cells work hard and long to fight their way into this cold, cruel. Whoa! It's a little dramatic, don't you think? Now, as annoying as the deep voice is, it kind of has a point. Of course I have a point! From the deep all-knowing voice and all science videos, educational movie trailers. Okay, but this is my video, so I get to talk, not you. What? Okay! So for those of you who don't know, that's a baby. But that's a baby too. And that's a baby. And that's a baby. Baby, 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 mop. So now that we've established that there's all different kinds of babies and mop, let's take a journey, shall we? So here we are, in an ovary, where half our story begins. We would go to like the male reproductive organs, but I'm a girl, so we're just gonna kinda like chill out here. So, for those of you who don't know, ovaries are where, in several organisms, the egg is produced. Oh, thank you. So here's our egg. So this is where our egg is, and the egg just kind of hangs out here until, you know, the egg can no longer survive, and it descends into the fallopian tubes. But, in the chance that sperm may come, which, oh, thank you. So, this is sperm. Obviously, there'd be a lot more of this stuff, but this is kind of what we got. So, only about 1% of what is ejaculated by the male makes it past the oviducts to the female reproductive organs, or in a human's case, the ovaries. And which is about a couple hundred to a thousand sperm cells. Now here's the thing, all of that sperm really, really wants the egg. And because they're all going after it, the egg is like, oh no, gross. And makes it really hard for the sperm to continue living there. Kind of like Megan Fox when Transformers first came out. Y you know what, hold on. Hey, can you toss me a pen? No, your methods of teaching suck. At least no one's falling asleep during my video. Thank you! Hold on. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, we're gonna call our egg Megan. Now, Megan is a very high maintenance girl. She won't just take any sperm. She wants her perfect match. So, you know, she's feeling her match. But thankfully for Megan, the sperm, or the boys, will stay around for up to 10 days. It's kind of like Romeo and Juliet because it really happens that fast. So in the preferred case, Megan chooses her sperm. Megan has found her Brian. Brian's idea of a good time is a little bit different than Megan's. So basically he kind of like latches on to her and sort of begins like digging in a way. And you know, Megan's a little, a little weirded out by this, but you know, she lets him do it because she loves Brian oh so much. So eventually, Brian digs his way deep enough and starts to become a part of Megan. And soon, Brian and Megan have become the same individual. Bregan. So at this point, Bregan begins to go through a process called cleavage. And during cleavage, this Bregan begins to split into about a hundred cells. And they're all formed in a group and it's called the blastocyst. Now the blastocyst moves through the fallopian tubes to the uterus. And at this point in time in the female's body, the female's immune system is like, whoa, foreign objects, what's going on? Let's go check this out. But Brennan's all just like, yo man, we're cool, we're cool. Like, can we just chill out here for like a while? Wants to do like a year? 
And you know, the immune system is like surprisingly cool with this. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And essentially the immune system becomes like Bregan's bodyguards from the paparazzi. At this point in time, only six to seven days have actually passed. I told you, it's like Romeo and Juliet. It happens really fast. So now that Bregan is really comfortable and it's safe inside the uterus, it actually begins to attach itself to the woman's body. So it can begin growing and obtain nutrients. So the trophectoderm, part of the blastocyst, turns into the placenta and other accessory organs. And so it can attain nutrients throughout the process of the woman's pregnancy. Why are you still here? Oh, I wasn't sleeping. saying the trophectoderm, or the trophoblast, as it's called before the process of gastrulation, attaches the embryo to the actual uterus. Now that now Bregan can obtain nutrients. Now the trophectoderm is only called so after the process of uh, gastrulation. Because beforehand it's called the trophoblast, which is part of the blastocyst. Gastrulation, the process in which a gastrula develops from blastula by the inward migration of cells. Hey, I always wanted to do that. Also during the process of gastrulation, the inner cell mass begins to develop into three separate tissue layers. The endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. Now the endoderm begins developing first. Now the endoderm forms the inner lining of multiple systems, such as the intestines and the smaller parts of the lungs, such as the alveoli. Next, the mesoderm. Now the mesoderm forms the muscles, the bones, and the heart. Pretty essential things. And the last thing to develop is the ectoderm, which, you know, all these kind of inner muscles and functions need to be protected. So, the ectoderm provides skin layers as well as the nervous system. After this 10 to 14 day process, the woman is now deemed as pregnant. And I say pregnant because at this point, still so many things can go wrong. But it's so fascinating. For like, for all we know, you could have been born a cat or an eagle or something because we all started out the same way. That actually was kind of fun to hear someone else explain everything. Maybe I should try it like that sometime. Do it! Oh boy, here we go. This is really exciting. We're going to learn about faith. No, I can't, I can't do this. It's too painful. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. Stay tuned for the next episode. Neighbor. I'm McKenna Stevens. And I'm signing off.